Hey, everybody out there. I think we got uh, one guy in the chat room so far, but uh, we'll let the ad thing start going and get that out of everybody's way. <coughs> We're recording too, so that's cool. So, yeah, I suppose the ad's probably still going, so I'll let it record here and have a little drink of soda. <laughs> But I know that thing goes, it takes a while to get out of there, so it's, uh, go through. Mm -hmm. All right, well, welcome to the live cast, everybody. This is uh, August 12th, 2012, and uh, we're here to talk a little bit. It's a little different than the normal one, just kind of messing around a little bit. And, uh, um,. I got the minor bar sitting upstairs, so we got to go and grab them at some point. But Great. you want to go grab them off my desk? Sure. Yeah. So we're going to be doing uh, just a couple little things. I uh, got my friend Dave here. Uh, he's running upstairs right now because we left something to sit up there. But after we go and grab that, um, we're going to talk about why we don't have a book review this month, but we will be having one next month again. And we're going to be talking about some stuff that Dave's been doing in his shop. And we'll be doing, uh, talk about what I've been up to lately, where I've been, um, I haven't been doing a lot in the shop as much as uh, a bunch of other woodworking related stuff, which was actually uh, pretty fun doing something a little different and actually a couple things a little different than, than what would normally be, be done. I have done a few things in my shop. Uh, if I can, if I can get a picture of it, I will actually get a picture of uh, one thing that I did for a friend of mine on the bandsaw and and uh and that's about it so dave is back and we will uh we'll be no, <laughs> no he's not he says <laughs> we'll we'll be messing around with something that we we got sent to me from a, a company we'll be talking about later too so hey dave how you doing <laughs> good <laughs> there's dave so we are uh i look different <laughs> you look different I don't know how you look different. You're both we're both on the screen now, at least. So, huh. <laughs> I, but we uh, thanks for running up there and grabbing that for me. We sure gonna be doing a little bit of messing around on a, on some stuff later here. So, actually, you have been doing some stuff in your shop lately. Nope. So, um, I guess last time we had mentioned a um, uh, a little mishap that you had with your um it's tape measure. Tape, tape measure. We'll put that up on screen here quick. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, w w w that got sent through the dust collector, if I remember right. <laughs> yes, that would be correct. <laughs> if it, it was one of them little cheap dollar tape measures from the uh, dollar store, and if you look, that is what is left of it after going through the dust collector. <laughs> How was the dust collector when that was done, anyway? Fine. <laughs> dust collector worked good. Yeah, where it was just a cheap plastic casing. If you look at it, you can see that it pretty much just ripped the casing off and it just <laughs> fit it all through. I've seen one do that when I, when I dropped one once, but I haven't had uh, I haven't had that go through dust collector and do that. And then the next picture you sent over was uh, I think this is about what halfway done with your newest your new workbench. Well, yeah, I mean, pretty much almost all the way done. Um, the only thing that's missing. That I did to it afterwards was I added some uh, bench dog holes, um, but uh, other than that, I mean that is pretty much what it looks like. Um, the dog holes I just did what uh, I think it was six inches apart across the front. I did two rows and. Uh, now you were you were going to use like standard dog hole or the standard dogs this time. You were you were using the Craig well, dogs or yeah, I actually got uh, well I was cheap. Um, <laughs> Which happens because, like, the metal ones, like you've got, mm -hmm. they're pretty expensive. Yeah, I've got metal ones and I've got some from uh, uh, Chris at Time Warp Tool Works. I got some wood ones too. Oh, uh, um, but yeah, Craig's got, I think it cost me like maybe 10 bucks for four dogs. Oh, wow. and they're they're plastic, but it's kind of cool. They got little like r rubber stoppers on the top, mm -hmm. so kind of like their bench dogs. It's kind of like the same premise. You can put a board on top of it and sand it. They say mm -hmm. I haven't actually tested that. I don't know if I'm brave enough. Oh, to like do the that, like so. the bench cookie kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, okay, sorry, bench cool. Cookies. Yeah, but yeah, other than that, I mean, they're just plastic and they work fine for clamping and stuff. I've used them quite a bit already, so that's cool. Yeah, I got a couple set of metal ones, and and I like them, but I actually like the ones from Chris at Time Warp 
better because what they have is is actually I'll I'll pop one out here and I'll throw it on screen quick. All right. Um, this this is the uh, the bench dog I got from Chris and I, I got I got this one I met Chris at the uh, um, Woodwork in America last year. They got a little metal catch and it works nice. And the part I like about them is when I'm using um, and this is just the one I pulled out of the bench right in front of me here. Yeah. And you just push it in a little bit and it pushes right in. It's no problem. Um, the part I like about them being wood is if I'm planing and I happen to not pay attention the way I should and it's up a little high or something, I'm not going to plane with them. And these metal ones, I mean, you know, these things are great and, and they're really solid. Right. But, I mean, you, you hit a plane with that and plan on grinding and sharpening a little bit. I mean, it, that's the only drawback. It's the only thing I don't like about my bench right now is, is I really wish that I had um, the uh, more of a tail vice type thing uh, on that end. Yeah. Um, what I what I do is I ha I have the I guess I call it the Wonder Pup. Um, okay. Get right under the bench here anyway. This this guy here. Oh yeah. Those yeah. Things are it's actually pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's 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 neat. And for a bench like mine, where you know I I. When I threw this together, it was, you know, this thing turns and, and, it, yep. and it pushes this out and it holds everything in and it works great. And for a bench like mine, I like it. Um, but I wish that that profile, this was actually down as low as I could put a bench dog. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, you can see on this one, I mean, I, I don't know if I can even get the camera, but it's pretty beat up from some of the stuff I've done to it. And I wish I could get just that little bit where it's it's barely sticking up yeah. um i'm happy with it but i wish i i wish i'd put a tail vice on this bench which i eventually want to replace the top with you know one of the slabs anyway so then it wouldn't be so bad but yeah and the vice that i put on mine is i mean it's just like a put it for, back on screen there. yeah it's just like a 45 dollar cheapie from an arts mm -hmm. and all i did was so that i could use the dogs um with the vice I actually, it's not in this picture shot, but, uh, like, right in this picture shot, I just got a 1x4, like, screw to it. Mm -hmm. um, what are you going to make? I don't know what that means. Oh, my slab. Yeah, the slab. Um, <laughs> when I make the slab, I'm probably going to end up doing um, uh, maple. There you go. Um, I, I have access to quite a bit of maple, and and it's it's got. A, I want it just a little bit thicker than what this is, and right now this is a little over an inch and a half. Uh, yeah, slab. <laughs> I got the idea. Um, I'm probably going to end up making this about two inches thick, which will make it almost perfectly even with the top of my uh, table saw, and and when the, then I'll be able to incorporate some of the other stuff I want to do into the top as well because it'll be a little thicker. And right now it's plywood and it works fine. It's just I wish I wish it was a little more solid and yeah. I could do some of the other stuff with it. And you know, like yours, I mean, you went from basically a couple pieces of plywood on saw horses, I think, and right. yeah, you know, it's to to this, and and you got a slab top that you made that out of. So yeah, all I did was I took uh, two by eights that. Uh, Two by eight by well, it's two by eight by eight, but I actually cut them down to five foot long just to yeah, keep <coughs> it uh, somewhat manageable if I want to move it. Yeah, but yeah, and I've yeah, and and, and uh, Tim asks is, is two to three inches supposed to be good for hold fast as well? Uh, yes, I use. Um, I'll put this on screen too. I actually have. Uh, right now an inch and a half top because it's it's uh, two in two pieces of three-quarter inch and it actually is really three-quarter inch plywood and I use this type of um, a hole fast and I have the shorter version but the you know th this type of yeah. uh, bench dog and I'm I don't have any problem with it I mean it, it's plywood it's not gonna last forever but it, it works I well, and like mine, I have a coat of shellac on the top, not knowing any better when I first built it. I wish I wouldn't have sanded it out, and, and I, I wish I would have put just oil on top so it would have more gription. Uh, um, yeah, there's stuff I wish I would have did different with mine, but the nice part is the base of mine is, I mean, these are all either, there's some pocket screws just to hold, like, shelf bracing in place, right. but almost the rest of it is almost all... Um, uh, uh oh, we got this thing going on here. Hang on a sec. We, we got to fix Dave's camera quick. 
I'm getting blind. <laughs> there we go. There you go. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. We had to fix the camera. But no, we um almost the whole base is all, you know, they're three by three posts and, and two by three or bigger that that are my support members and they're all mortars and tenon in. I mean this yeah. it's one heck of a solid base. So replacing the top ain't that big of a deal. Well I was gonna say two things that I did afterwards after this picture which made it a little bit more solid was I just used two by fours and I actually pocket screwed everything huh? just because I wanted it to go quick and I didn't really want to take the time to make the mortars and tenons. Yeah. But it, they worked, but it was still just a little bit shifty. Uh -huh. So all I did was I actually cut some triangle, uh, kind of like, um, I don't want to call them glue blocks because I didn't glue them. I, again, just pocket screwed it to like the leg and, and to the top. And just put them in the corner of the back, back legs, mm -hmm. and that shirt it right up. Yeah, right well, in. and the thing is, it depends on what you're doing on them, too. I mean, this, my bench is my cutoff table for my table saw, and my bench, and the um, support table for my band saw, and, it, you know, it, it does everything. And the, and the little bench that I have my computer setting on right now, that sits in the corner all the time, and that does, I do the joinery there. and. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's a it's a cool looking little bench. I mean, you can do a lot of well, stuff with it. I mean, how how big is that? What's the length on that one though? It's it's five foot. It's, five foot. Yeah, and one thing too, I was gonna say that I had to do it. Well, I didn't have to, but I, I did just to kind of like uh, make it a little better. Is the moisture being? I've got a basement shop. Mm -hmm. Like mine. <laughs> yeah, with the moisture that I have down there because I don't have a dehumidifier down there yet. Mm -hmm. Um, the two buys actually they didn't really warp, but they they definitely expanded and contracted. <laughs> so I ended up with like maybe a sixteenth inch gap between the the three boards. Okay. So oh, I, the ones that you include, yeah. 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 So I eventually what I did was I I un unscrewed them mm -hmm. and just ended up putting pocket screws to kind of hold them together. So sort of the top and your and the way you built your top, it's made to be replaceable. So yeah. when you beat it up, it's not. A bit. And that's originally what I did with the plywood, but I'm like. You know, if you make a three, you know, almost a three-inch top, the like I'm going to do, I just plane the thing down. Nah. You know, big deal. It's not, you know, so. Well, I guess I, we can. I was going to say, oh. looking at the chat room there, I'm not really sure the brand name of that the orange device. I know it's it's just, if you go to Menards, it's whatever the Menards brand is. I can't yeah. think of what I it think, is. Isn't it Jorgensen that they carry? No, it's not Jorgensen. I can't. They used to. Huh. Well, yeah, they do carry some of their stuff, but I can't yeah. think of what the name of it is off the top of my head. But yeah, yeah, like I said, it was like forty-five bucks, and for is it a quick release one or just a no. regular? No, and I've got the the white quick release version that I picked up in Green Bay at that Woodworkers Depot place yeah. years ago, and that one's still on the bench in the garage. So yeah, how does it do as an end vice? Actually, really well. I was like I was saying. One thing I did was I took a 2x4 and actually on the router table notched it out to go around the end of the vise. And that way I was able to actually put two dog holes in the 2x4. Oh, cool. So that way I can actually use it too where I can put the dogs on the top of the top of the vise and in the bench. And I can use it pretty much any length down the bench. Oh, cool. So it, it actually does work really well. That's cool. Well, what else have you been up to working on? This is a picture of a small table? Yeah, it's actually a step stool. Okay, I was going to say, size, you can't tell scale from <laughs> anything else in the picture, so I wasn't sure how big it was, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually had a buddy who, uh, not really, he, he didn't have no woodworking skills, and he's like, I want to learn some woodworking, and... Oh, cool. The girl I was dating at the time needed a step stool, so I'm like, all right, let's go get a... I went to, uh, we went to a uh, fleet farm of all places, got a, uh, I think it was like an eight foot board of ash and uh, made a step stool out of one piece of ash. And he was like, oh, you're not going to get that all out of one piece. And I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> cool. So. Yeah. The, they like the, the grain on the bottom. It's actually kind of oh, neat yeah. the way it, the way it pictures through and. It's weird. The directionality of the top almost goes one way, and the directionality of the other almost—it's it, kind of. Yeah, it was a beautiful piece of ash. I mean, yeah, yeah that I, sounds dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, it was kind of funny. Uh, actually, you, you got the next project on there. Yeah, yeah, I got the next one. This is, I guess, this is part way through glue up of of some of it. Yeah, it's just the case frame. 
And then the next picture is... Yeah, this is a case frame of a... I'm doing like a... It's going to be a bookshelf, but also going to hold DVDs and CDs. And that's actually the front. Uh, I kind of... I was hoping <clears throat> that I could find some more ash like that. Oh, with the, with the figure like that? Yeah, because I wanted it to actually go like where you see the white right there mm -hmm. around the doors, on the outside of the doors. That's actually Aspen, but I was hoping that I could find some really nice grain oh, and ash. Yeah. But I, yeah, the Aspen actually turned out pretty well. And it's kind of funny. If you look at the doors, you'll see that uh, on the top and the bottom, there's like a little, another little piece of, oh, we got an ad. Oh, well, we got an ad. Yeah, that ad. <laughs> the ad goes through every once in a while, and you never know who's going to who's gonna get it when, depending on when they logged in. So. But yeah, it, I agree. You, yeah, you got to kind of like find the right place to get some good stuff. But uh, <laughs> needless to say, if you look at that picture once it comes back, I'm guessing I don't know. Can they hear? Us? Yeah, they, yeah. They, usually they can hear through. And if not, you, if if somebody misses something because of the um because of the ads at all, uh, we are recording this, and you can pick up some of the stuff you might have missed because of the ad on the the recorded version too. So. But yeah, if you look at the doors, it's kind of funny. Uh, at the top and the bottom, there's like a little... There's a little <laughs> missing or... Well, it's actually a little piece of red oak that kind of matches the oh, that's center cool. pieces. Yeah. And the reason I did that is because I screwed up the measurement when cutting the <laughs> <laughs> Well, it ended up looking nice. Don't tell anybody that was a design feature that wasn't a screw-up. <laughs> well, and that's what I was I'm like sitting there trying to figure out, how the heck can I cover this? And I'm like... I'm like, hey, if I just put a you know an inch piece in here, I'm like, that hey, look kind of cool. And then I was like, kind of playing with it. I'm like, well, if I reverse it, yeah, it's kind of kind of like stylish. All right, cool. Yeah, it ends up looking kind of cool. Well, and that's when I originally did the the rocking chair. I mean, I I had put the stripe. <laughs> exactly, a, a design change. Yes, it's a design feature. <laughs> What's like when I originally did the uh, the rocking chair? I was I, I glued up a test piece. And I had maple on the outside, and it was supposed to be a centered piece of walnut. And when I was milling it down, I liked the way it looked better off center. Yeah. So I ended up milling one side of the lumber down more on purpose to keep it off center because at first it was, you know, I honestly what I did with the test piece is I sent it through too many times without flipping it over, <laughs> and I looked at it and went, "Hey, I like this better." <laughs> so. Oh uh, yeah. yeah so you been up to uh, to much else in your shop lately, or? Well, that's pretty much been consuming everything. So yeah, uh, as I say, got a few got a few things going on there. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, well, mine has been a little bit different. I um, this month, uh, we're we're still talking with Fox Chapel. We're you know they're they're still around. We're not doing a book review this month, a book giveaway this month because honestly, I'm still going through the book. Mm. Um, this is a, a picture of the book. It's veneering and inlay, and I could probably do a nice audio, you know, five ten minute thing. But yeah. I honestly just didn't think it would do justice, just given it a normal book review. I want to take at least one of the things in here, probably one of the simpler things, and actually do a video of that as the book review. No. Um, it, it may be cutting veneer, it may be doing some inlay stuff. I, I'm not sure what part of it I'm going to do yet, but I thought, without trying to give away any of the secrets of the book, because they want you to buy the book, obviously, but to at least show you the result of, you know, a couple of the steps of it or something, because I think it's a it's a it's a great resource from you know picking picking it, cutting it, dealing with it, how to deal with the veneer when it's outside, you know, how to store it. Right. Um, how to apply it, how to do inlays compared to veneering. And, you know, it, it actually was enough where I said, I can't do it justice given it five minutes. No. Um, so it may be a five, ten minute video, just kind of cut up, and but at least it'll show that, yeah, here I did something from this book, and uh, I think it would be better that way. That's cool. So sorry, everybody. Um, I got a little more news later, but the next giveaway is going to be a little better anyway, so we'll talk about that more later. <laughs> I see a whole bunch of books behind me. Maybe the giveaway can just be taking one with me. <laughs> no, I have to have some. Of my, yeah, yeah. Dave wants, Dave wants me to give my stuff to him. <laughs> the other stuff that's been going on, um, I talked about last time that I started this bed build. And that this part of the bed was all screwed up. Because if you look there, that headboard actually opens. 
and I didn't account for any space for it to open to. Well, I during during the build, I actually you know caught it before I was there, and I figured everything out. But this is the finished bed. Um, it is done. It's in place. I have some of the videos done uh, about everything but the ladder because the ladder was a uh, built in place afterward kind of thing. Um, we were going to do something different with the way the shelving was underneath to use it, but uh, I like the way the ladder was better. So my daughter has slept in it several nights and basically the, the two sides uh, our two by sixes and there's a piece of angle iron underneath and there's maple strips that go across that angle uh, from side to side to the angle iron. Okay. Um, those are one and a half inch thick and then there is also a piece of three eighths inch plywood that lays over those maple strips. Wow. So all of the weight gets um, distributed over to those angle irons and that gets down through those three by three posts. Um, the headboard does open, um, so she's got a little space to hide stuff, which I don't know if that's good coming in teenage years or not, but <laughs> it's there. Um, we redid the whole room, and yes, that was the, the biggest part was to conserve space. Um, she wanted a bed, she wanted her dresser. She, we, um, I'll probably do a couple shots uh, on the. I'm gonna, I've got a couple videos that'll be coming up, and I'll do a final shot of the whole room. Um, if you see just that corner right there, that silver piece. That is actually a vanity that we bought and completely redid, and we painted it all in silver. And it's the the three mirrors like hmm. makeup thing and everything. And she, you know, she wanted green walls and blue is that walls. That's why you look so well tonight. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that's because this is what we've been doing for how long. So other than the bed build, um, I've got a photo that I'm going to try to get up on the screen quick of some stuff that I helped a friend out with. Um, I don't know if I can find it quick enough, but if I can, I can, and if I can't, I can't, I guess. Um, you need some Jeopardy music? Yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> um, not sure where I put the thing. Uh, let's see here. Crud. Well, what we did is we made, uh, Mickey Mouse heads. No. Um, basically, yeah, you had a picture of that on the site, didn't you? Yeah, I, I actually, I pick, I put it out on, I got one on Facebook, I put it on Twitter. If anybody's seen them, all it was was um, all that we did. It was just three circles that we cut on a bandsaw, and we cheated. We did, we did um, uh, pocket holes to hold the ears on, wow. and the first version of the ears we made so small that uh, it looked like a teddy bear. So we got rid of those ears. <laughs> <coughs> um, it's all made out of cedar, and the thing is, the the Mickey Mouse heads. There's a an archway that he made, and it's for a wedding. And he okay. bought part of it and built some of the other. And the Mickey Mouse head that's going to be Mickey and Minnie. And so we made a bow out of Spanish cedar, so it's going to be a little redder when it sits on there. Um, and we just pocket hold the ears on because one side you're not going to see it all. And the idea is that they can take those Mickey Mouse heads and hang them in their living room after they're married and stuff. Mm. So it's like, and it, it's a Mickey and Minnie thing is kind of there. So. That's I helped cool. out with that. That was kind of fun. And uh, this is something that I will – I got to go to the mid the 2012 Midwest Scroll Saw Trade Show. Uh, last year I had a video out that actually is, I think, my most watched video of anything that I had a, a chance to talk with Shannon Flowers. Um, the people from Fox Chapel were overly busy, and they did not have a chance to sit down. But no. uh, Dick Bowman, who had has done – I think this is his 26th, 25th, or 26th year doing stuff with this skull saw show. Um, I had a chance to talk with him quite a bit, and his picture's up in the corner there. Um, he has some really good stories about what's been going on with, with the skull saw show over the years. And he's gonna, we're going to figure out some time within the next week or two, and we're going to have a conversation. We're going to put the video and the pictures that I got at the skull saw show in the background while we're talking about it. And the clock that he has that right now is about as tall as I am and about wider than I can stretch my arms out. Um, and I'm six foot, so wow. it's not a little clock. It's the story behind that about a hundred people in a hundred years and a whole bunch of other stuff. I, I really, if anybody has a chance, listen to it because it's, it's being built to put in a museum and be opened in a hundred years. Oh, wow. So it's kind of neat and uh, it was cool. So I, I hope that um, we can work out scheduling wise to get a chance to talk. So, yeah. um, 
that's been what's what's been going on there. <coughs> Excuse me. While I was at the school saw show, I had a chance to take, um, you know, swing the camera around. We'll, we'll, no. It's it's just a silly little thing that we did. You want me to move this too? Um, I think it'd be okay right there. Right. It's just a it, it's a silly little project, but it was kind of fun to do because I took a, a class, and I think it was. Um, Gosh, I don't even remember how many hours we sat there. I think three and a half, four hours. My dad and I both uh, both got a chance to go through it, and it was a, a different way to do um, in Karja. And uh, I'm gonna move a cord here. Hang on, sorry guys. Um, the Intarja was kind of cool because I'm gonna put uh, my my little pumpkin up on screen here. Um, see if we can get it on there. There we go. And the Intarja was kind of fun, and, and Dad and I both had fun doing it. What we did was, normally with Intarja, there, there's a really big process to, to going through this. And basically, when you cut, you cut on the line the first time. You know, your first cut's on the line, and this next cut's on the line. Now, when you cut this next one for this piece, you're going to cut next to the paper. So all you're doing is you're spraying the paper and, and laying it on there, and you're going to use the same pattern over and over and over. And, I mean, I, I've been doing scroll saw stuff for a while, and nothing like my dad does, but um, – and I've never had them right off the saw that tight before. No. I mean, I mean, there's been – there's no sanding or anything done on any of this. So and that's the way it came out right on in the class, and it was really fun to do. Um, now, granted, these have to be sanded down, so these are thinner on the outside. But I mean, I mean that's you know right off the saw, and like you can see a little bit of gapping in there. But I mean, it, it, that's nothing compared to when you have to sand them down anyway, yeah. and you round your edges over. You won't see any of that. And it, it was a blast to do. The guy was a great teacher, and we're hopefully going to get him up to the um, to the guild, too. He's, uh, he said that he's, he'd be willing to do some of the uh, um, the classes up there. So, yeah, that's And cool. that, that's what I had a chance to go down there and do. And um, it, was, it was fun. Homer Bishop. Yes, thanks, Dad. I see you in there. Yes, that was – I felt so bad I couldn't remember his name off the top of my head there. Um the other thing, actually, here, I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to put the camera back up here again. And what I did, I picked this up. And this is a, a pattern for a dragon clock. And when I was down there, I thought, I picked up the clock, the inside of the clock here for it, too. And when I was down there, I thought this, lacewood, if you get a close-up on this one once, I'm thinking that looks a lot like dragon scales, so I'm gonna make this clock out of this chunk of lacewood that I picked up down there, and uh, and the the ears and a couple of things that are outside of that stuff I'm gonna do uh, with some other kind of wood, but that's what we're gonna do um, with that clock. So I thought it'd be kind of fun, and either Faith will have it, or if she don't like it, then it's going on my desk at work. So <laughs> can give it to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> you think so, huh? <laughs> So that's what I've been up to instead of some of the stuff that uh, that I wanted to be doing um, in the shop anyway. I'm very happy that I got to go to school saw show. I'm real happy that I got a chance to do uh, do the class over there. Um, and I just got done rendering and doing a conversation with Hendrik, Hendrik Vario again. And what we're doing is we're starting a series of how to get into woodworking and how to start doing all... Like how, to, how you set up your shop, what tools might you want to get first, and we kind of went off the power tool end of you know, what he thinks somebody should do if they're setting up a shop. And then um, we're going to talk about the scroll saw end of that, and not scroll saw, the <laughs> scroll saw is on the brain, um, the, the hand tool end of it, and a, a few of the other things too, um, how to start into it and what tools to do, and we're going to kind of go off a series of that, along with uh, some of his videos we're going to cover too, and that's part of the thing I was talking about is some of the giveaways coming up is I think we're going to do something with Hendrick and some of his videos. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. If you have any questions for Hendrick, uh, feel free to Skype me. Uh, Skype is Ravenheart or 920-933-4940. You can leave a voicemail there. Or if you want to, you can also use the contact form on the site or email me at RavenheartRenditions at Ravenheart.com. On top of that, <laughs> there's a few other things that have been going on. Um, Kelly Bresnahan 
and I'll put his picture up on the screen here. Um, he was uh, he was harassing us a little bit about uh, Carrie Holtman and I were saying about how the lathe is our nemesis. And Kelly is a great guy. He's actually part of the um, the club up in uh, up in Green Bay, uh, the Woodwork uh, Northeast Wisconsin Woodworkers Guild, and he's also um, a member of the Turning Guild in Green Bay too. Um, I'm going to put first I'm actually going to do this in reverse of what I was going to do I'm going to put some of Kelly's work that's just some of the stuff he's done recently um, those are some pretty big pieces and if you look at them they're just gorgeous the way he does his stuff hmm. and I had a chance to go up there I have some footage done with him Kelly Bresnahan his website's up on the screen right there and what we did was we made a wood mallet first hmm. for, for spindle work um, I love the wood that it's made out of. It was, it's really, and it's, it's solid. I made it to fit my hand. I, we did the beads and the coves. I got footage of doing the whole thing. I also have footage of sharpening and fixing my angles and whatnot on my tools. Oh, wow. Um, that's what we got done so far. So far, actually, we covered how he got into stuff and, and, and about the school. And then we covered uh, sharpening, we covered spindle work, we covered basic lathe, lathe safety. And I'm going to go up in a week or two and we're going to cover um, bowls and vessels too. And speaking of lathe safety, oh, oh yeah. see an ad again, but... Um, oh, no, well, we're recording it anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> You're on. <laughs> well, no, I was just going to say, uh, speaking of safety, I actually saw, and I'll have to send you the link, but... It was a video of a guy who was with uh, the inclusion in there, the rod inclusion. Yeah, and the yeah, I po full up, flew off. And yes, I field. posted that one on uh, on Facebook too, and I've seen that one, and I thought, holy crap, I am so yeah, glad. I that's probably why I saw it. We'll yeah, I seen before. that one, and I was like, holy cow! Now I now I remember why I wear the face shield all the time. I'm like, Whoa. well, and I'm seriously thinking about getting one now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, you can have a little piece, and I mean. It, the thing's moving pretty fast. I mean, it, it, you know, that kind of stuff can happen. And, well, right. And, I mean, you know, <coughs> you normally wear, like, well, actually, when, I, when I'm when i doing lathe work, I'll usually wear safety glasses with a respirator. But still, mm -hmm. like, you know, and granted, I don't do anything as huge as what he had, but still. Yeah, he was doing a pretty big piece, too. Yeah, I mean, it was. But still, I mean, it makes you think. If you, if you get even, like, a, a one-inch piece flying off at you at your face, mm -hmm. yeah, the glasses are going to protect your eyes. and, and you Yeah. Know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, he had a big Gash knock on his head and some other head, stuff. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was pretty. That's crazy. Yeah, it was it was an interesting thing to watch. I'm like, holy cow, but, uh, yeah. Now, Kelly, Kelly was a great, he's a great teacher. He actually teaches up at the um, tech school in Green Bay. And he, we had a chance to sit down with the camera and talk about a lot of different stuff, how, what tools you want to get if you're going to start. And it, it depends, you know, if you're going to start spindle work, are you going to start with bowl work, or how are you going to do it? You know, so traditional tool wise, um, I did make the mallet. I'm happy I made the mallet. One thing that the re, part of the reason that we made the mallet is uh, because you're using a Morris taper on spindle work, and when you're going to pound that spur in, you should never use metal. Oh, yeah. So that's part of what this is for, is getting that spur up, because you can mushroom it over and then get your mm -hmm. your Morse taper stuck in there and everything else. So that's oh. part of why this is one of the first projects, is so you can use it. Plus, I'm thinking this could be used for a lot of stuff other than that, too. Oh, and, yeah. and when you irritate me. But, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It was looking pretty good in my back pocket before. Yeah, he was trying to get away with it, so he couldn't sit down because he had some there, but... Um, otherwise, I've been doing a few other things, too. You had a question. Do you have a lathe? Yes, I, I do have a lathe, actually. I have a, a Delta MIDI lathe. Um, I've been doing, I've turned uh, quite a few pens as presents. Uh, I've done some small bowls. I actually have a, a bowl next to... Can you get a shot of it? Oh, yeah, sure. I, um, I have some small bowls. I've got a, a bowl right next to my, um... Actually, we'll uh, we'll put my lathe up on screen. You got it on there? Yep. Yeah, that is my lathe and my my lathe setup. Um, it, you know, I've done quite a few pens. I've got the extension so I can do long spindles if I want to. Uh, I I'm kind of self-taught. I've done a bunch of stuff that I liked and a bunch of stuff that I don't. I guess the things I don't like are more the bowl end of things. Uh, 
I was somewhat happy with the way I was doing spindle work, but the way that Kelly taught me how to do some of the stuff, I, I think I'm going to be happier. Um, the way the angles are different and the way you, it, it's, it's kind of nice. So what's the length of the bed? Oh, yeah. Uh, length of the bed. Honestly, I'm not sure. Um, the whole... Here, I'll grab the tape measure and tell you. Hang on. The whole bed is... <laughs> Three foot nine, but it's actually about. I could, I could, I could turn something about three foot six. No. Um, actually, no, about three foot three because of the different centers that that would, that would have to be on there. Um, and yes, Dad, I do have to turn your pen yet. It, I have uh, one piece missing from a kit that I want to make that one out of. <laughs> um, but I'll be just buying a new kit and then using the other stuff for replacement parts, but. Um, yeah, that's why I keep going back and forth too. I got a Rikon lathe, and I'm still thinking about getting the exp extension bed for mine, but I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, I, I mean, I, I I like the lathe. Um, it, it's it's a fine, it, it works fine. It has nothing wrong with it. I picked it up second hand, so it's not like it was uh was expensive for anything, and the the tools honestly cost way more than the lathe itself did. Um, yeah. The I've got the 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 chuck on there. I've got the um, I've got a, a longer tool rest. Quite a few things that I've done to it that I'm now happy with it. But uh, when I first got it, I didn't know what I was doing. I wrecked a lot of stuff. <laughs> and and the biggest thing I'm looking forward to now is since even even the stuff that I thought I knew what I was doing, um, I picked something up on on spindle work that I thought I knew and. Now the bowl stuff where I've made a bunch of little bowls. I've got one that sits next to my wallet that my quarters go in on uh, on my nightstand. And um, I've got a few other ones that, that Julia's uh, confiscated. I think my mom's got one. I've got one that I'm partway through working on right there that's a, a box elder uh, that I did some stuff with. It lays tools for a pole lathe. Oh, cool. That's cool. Cool. I want to see that one. <laughs> Yeah, the best bowls are usable ones. I, I, I like the little, like the little one that I use for putting my quarters in next to my wallet on my nightstand. I mean, that, that thing's awesome. I, yeah. I wouldn't trade that for anything. Yeah, I haven't done any bowls yet. No, no, they're fun. It, I, I think the fun part is because when all them curls just, and then <laughs> you make a lot of shavings really fast, but it's cool. And the other yeah. part is I've, I've been meaning to try, trying to do hollow vessel stuff. Mm. And I've got a couple tools to do them with, and I just I think part of it is not knowing and almost being afraid to. Okay, I'm, all I'm going to do is break this thing. Right. And so he said, "Come on up, we'll show you bulls and, and hollowing." So I'm like, I'm looking That's forward cool. to it. I mean, and I hope I got a lot of editing to do because we've got a lot of different stuff in there. But uh, they'll they'll be coming out over time. I'll probably have one over about uh, Kelly and his school and how he does stuff. Um, I'll have one about. Uh, sharpening, one about spindle turning, and then eventually one about bowls and one about hollow vessel stuff. So cool. um, that'll be a series that'll be coming out. So well, then you want to <clears> come <throat> down and show me how to turn a bowl. And there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trial and error. I've done quite a bit of that. I've sent some pieces all over too. But <laughs> if I can get the guy to show me, I'm gonna let him. Oh yeah. Uh, the other thing that I've been up to lately is, as normal, I've been trying to talk to quite a few different woodworkers around, and I've been trying to talk to some some of the woodworking companies too. And the latest one is uh, Microjig. And they're another one that said uh, in time, uh, some of the giveaway stuff, they would be uh, willing to participate on some of it too. And during our conversation, um, I had mentioned that I want to make a crosscut sled. And we were talking about um, this product right here. And this is their, I guess they, the the name of it is a zero play guide bar system. And he also mentioned it as a one touch guide bar. So he sent me two of them for my uh, crosscut sled. And we're going to be doing this. We'll be, I'm going to, we're going to take them apart, right? We're going to take the packages apart and put them together right now and kind of play with them. And this is going to be part, actually what we're going to do is after the recording part, we're going to do this part live. We're not going to record the playing with them part, but we are going to have it live and doing this. Um, so if anybody wants to stick around after we're done with the recording, 
And yes, they do make the gripper, and I love those things. So, um, so these things, <coughs> excuse me, these are the minor bars that I got sent from uh, Microjig, and they are gonna. These are what I'm gonna use on my crosscut sled. So we're gonna play with these live. Um, like I said, it's not gonna be recorded, but it is gonna be live on the air. So I'm happy that he sent them to me, and I'm happy that he's gonna gonna be. Uh, Helping out with with some of the stuff on the uh, the giveaway portion of things. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it when different people get different timing with the um, yeah, the with the ads. Yeah. There's there's not a whole lot I can do about it. Sorry guys, I, I don't have the. I think they want between two and three hundred a month to not have ads on the thing, but uh, yeah. um. <laughs> Actually, Dave, since we're here, before we start messing with these things, can you do me a favor and grab that pile of metal sitting over there on my other bench? Well, <laughs> Punishment for coming in late. The, the one with the crank right there, there's a couple of them. This? Yep, that, both of them pieces. I think there's three pieces there. I had a chance. I only see two, but... Yeah, bring, yeah, it is just the two for now. I had a chance to talk with Shannon Rogers about a hand crank grinder, and this is actually another... Um, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned this. While some of the people, while I'm online and while we're still recording, too, because this is the hand crank grinder that I picked up. Um, as you can see, the stone is all wore out. And if you turn it, it actually makes... Uh, not much noise, more of just the uh, a little bit of a. It, it's it just has a little trouble. It needs a little help, so I'm going to be refurbishing this on video too. Um, thanks to Shannon, we I got what I think is actually a pretty good one. If if you look on the inside, um, there's no teeth missing. There's no problems really. There's a little bit of rust, but uh, this is going to be uh, bolted on next to my sharpening station once I get it all refurbished. So. Um, Huh. This is so. How's that bolt on? Or it uh, here actually. I'll put it back on screen. This uh, it actually right through here. This clamps on. Oh, okay. You know, it, it this doesn't turn well right now. Um, you know, it, it turns, but it's pretty. And then it, um, I have to make a tool rest for it too. Oh, okay. So I mean, there's no tool rest right now, but I'll, I'll make one. Um, but this is my my next little refurbishment project that's coming up. It. Uh, Thanks to some of the people who have became donating members. Um, I used the the money that were donated, and it bought this. So I'm not just yeah. screwing around with it. I actually did word working related stuff. So, <laughs> um, and that will be a future video too. So, yeah. yep, that one with shipping was I think a little less than twenty five bucks, and that was from eBay too. Yeah, it was, and um, if actually, if you're thinking about getting one, uh, the conversation that I had with Shannon Rogers, and it is out on the site. I mean, he he really did cover a, a lot of stuff, um, a, a lot of stuff about you know what to look for, what what to kind of stay away from, yeah. uh, stuff like that. So, it, 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 I I think it was was pretty good, and and I liked it. And thanks to him. And a couple of donating members, I picked up a uh, hand crank grinder, and I'll be showing people how to use it later. So cool. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Well, before uh, before we cut off the recording portion of stuff and go to um, go to the the live but not recorded portion, is uh, say if anybody's got any questions out there, I'm more than more than willing to to answer anything or. Uh, Try to answer anything. Yeah, or, or try to answer anything, or I'll look it up and I'll post something about it later if I don't have an answer. Um, that or if there's anything around the shop you need to see, like, you know, swung around like you did with the lathe, whatever you need. So. Right. Um, that's pretty much what I got for this live one right now, other than we're going to play with the, the minor bars off, off recording portion. Uh, Dave's been up to a few things. I've been up to stuff that wasn't really shop related, but it was. Uh, it was still woodworking related, so it's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make sure I say thanks to everybody for for stopping in. The next live cast is going to be uh, the 16th, same time, 
Uh, it should be a Sunday unless I screwed up, which if, if I did screw up, then I'll post a new date at some point. But thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching everything. I'm going to kill the recording part, but I'm going to leave the, the, the live cast on. We can talk about whatever we need to. Oh, I have a bunch of hand saws. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, I have quite a few of them down here in the shop. Not all of them, but I've got I've got quite a few. <laughs> yeah, I do uh, uh, sharpening of my own hand saws. I do. Uh, I'm kind of a hand saw junkie. Most of mine, I think there's only a couple of them. What is a good TPI rip saw? Are you doing? Well, I guess that's. Um, it somewhat depends on what you're doing for, um, for, uh, uh, if you're doing hardwood or softwood. Um, but if, and if you want, you, and you, do you want a, a more finished cut when you're done or do you want a more rough cut? If you just want to break it down for a rip saw, I mean, I've seen people doing you know, five, Five to seven, I think, is it was normal for them. Don't um, ask me. Is a good average? Oh, good average for rough. Um, Shannon would be the guy that would give the more what what standard, I guess you'd say. Um, mine, I think, is it's either a seven or a nine, the one that I use the most, and I use that on pine. I use that on hardwood. I. A lot of stuff I do with it, so. <laughs> I like it's, look down. It's just grape soda. <laughs> I like look down, and here I was drinking grape soda. I'm like, all right. That's okay. It's just grape soda. Like, <laughs> next time, maybe afterward, we might have beer. Yeah. <laughs> you can kind of see the Budweiser sign behind me you now. Yeah, that's okay. Um, <laughs> that's left over from when the shop was the bar, so. Um, but no, I think mine is either a seven or a nine, if I remember right. Oh, more ads. Yeah, after the recording. <laughs> yeah, the ad comes up a lot. So, uh, yeah, as far as the hand saws go, I, I guess I just do what works for me. I mean, I, I've, I, I'm gonna grab the two that I use the most and show you. Sure. <laughs> um, I'm gonna put the. Uh, actually, I can just do it on this this main screen here. That's fine. I mean, this one is an Atkins. He said after the recording. Okay, no, that's fine. This is oh, that the beer is after the recording. Oh, um, this is an Atkins, and this was um, this one was my father-in-law's, I believe, um, and I got that from him. And I mean, and that's that's my tooth configuration. I mean, I've got it somewhat aggressive, but not too bad. And if I remember right, let me see if I can get you an actual, it's been a while since I looked at it, so. Yeah, mine's a seven, and I'm real happy with this one. Um, I, I've got it set a little more aggressive than some, but it's, uh, and this one was in the family. I don't even remember whose this was, but this is older than dirt itself, I think. And this is my rip saw, and it, it's a, a knock. It's a distant, but distant made it for somebody else. And I mean, that's, you know, it, it's a little, little more. If I remember it, I'll measure this one too. It's been a while since I looked at them, so. The way it measures, it's an eight. Something doesn't seem right with that, so. Um. Those are the two saws. These are the saws I use the most. This this breaks down stock all the time. So, um, and actually, I've got some of the recording of the bed build where uh, I'm out in the garage breaking down stock, and those are the two saws that are on there. So, I mean, you know what my hand saw is? You have a circle saw. <laughs> right, that, yeah, that's about it. Dave is not a hand tool user. <laughs> <coughs> I am um, one of these days. I don't know. Yeah, I. I mean, I love my power tools. I have no problem with it. But <laughs> um, I love my power tools. I love them. I'm not going to get rid of any of my power tools, but I do enjoy using using my hand tools quite a bit. So yeah, yeah, and I mean, it's one of those where I think someday, you know, I'll probably do a little bit more. But for the time that I have, it's just easier just to yeah. yeah. Well, and it. 
and that's a thing too. I mean, it, it's not like it has to. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna put you up on screen here quick. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this with the nice thank you thing. There, look at that. Ha ha ha. You were just Mr. B for a while there. I was gonna say. What's up with the B? That was me not having a transition ready for this one, but um. Yeah, it's and yeah, most people aren't like hand tool people like he's you know, saying. A lot of people are, and a lot of people just you know stay with. Yeah, well, and a lot of people are are strictly power tool, and and there's actually a big surgence of strictly hand tool people yeah. now too, which I'm not either. It depends on what I feel like doing. I mean, I've I've got tons of hand planes. I've got a whole bunch of saws. I've got right. chisel. Yeah. Actually, that's one thing I got to show you guys too. I got some new toys. Hang on. But I mean, I'm like I've got my block planes that I actually use quite a bit if I need to knock something down, or you know, and I don't know, hand chisels and stuff. So um, yeah, uh, do and, some stuff. And I got these. They are very sharp, so I'm not touching the end. These are my new <laughs> pairing chisels. Well, my new extremely old pairing chisels. <laughs> um, I actually got a chance to sharpen them up. I flattened the back real nice, and they didn't come the way I, I wanted them. They only had three handles, so I do know how to do some lathe stuff, so I made a new one <laughs> um, because I wanted they, – they came five where the set, and uh, I wasn't happy that I only got three three handles with. I wanted four of them to always have the handle. Uh, the one-inch version uh, of, of which I, I honestly think I would use the least of all of them uh, was is only this long. Oh, wow. You can tell that one has been sharpened many, many, many times. <laughs> nice. um, and the other ones are the ones I actually bought the set for anyway. Um, the the quarter inch and the half inch are the two that I wanted the most. Where'd you and, get them from? Uh, eBay. Oh, okay. Um, and actually, I don't remember, but it was a pretty darn good price that I got them for, too. <laughs> um, it came with three handles, and you need to make another one. What I want to do, though, is actually make uh, different handles to replace these. I want them... Yeah. About that long. I want more leverage for pairing and stuff, but I have not had it. I have a very nice set of two cherries chisels that I use as bench chisels. I have not had a set of decent pairing chisels. I now do. I'm very happy I got them. Cool. And so, and that's I'm trying to think of anything else that happened since the last, uh, but since the last live cast, that's what's been going on. The brand of the chisels, they are actually old, very old Stanleys. <coughs> Now, how could you put your table saw away? <laughs> well, he does a few more. He does a few more hand tool things. Actually, if you haven't had a chance to to check out Tim's site, he's uh, yeah. it, it's a uh, it's pretty fun to watch, and uh, he's the one that's doing this whole people voted to uh, see what he was gonna build. Okay. It's kind of cool, and uh, actually, correct me if I'm wrong. It was a people he took users or viewer suggestions. Of those viewer suggestions, he then made a list, and people voted on what he's going to build next. That's cool. And you design it, I build it project. That's what he called <laughs> it. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's cool. But, yeah, that was it was really neat to see, and I, I think it's a great idea. And, actually, he's one of the people that said he's on board when I want to do my uh, – um, I actually want to take a project, have one person start it, mm. send it around to a few of us online people, and get it back to the person who started it to right. finish it. Yeah. But each person does a step. Well, that's cool. And I want it to go from point A all the way back to A through a, a bunch of different online woodworkers and see what we can do with it. Um, because of time commitments, I'm not going to be able to do it till probably next year sometime. But yeah. that's something I want to do. And you're on the list of one I'm going to send to. So, uh, <laughs> Well, I think we're going to cut the recording portion of it and play with these uh, minor bars a little bit. I want to say thank you again to Mike or Jig for, for being part of this stuff. And thank you again for Hendrick for his time. If anybody has any questions for him, make sure you leave me a message. I'll ask him during the next uh, next interview, which is next month. I'll post it out there. I think the 13th, him and I talk. So you can get me a question, anything you have for him prior to then. If it's related to his videos, if it's related to... Um, stuff we talked about or anything to do with woodworking the guy teaches does a lot of stuff out there so or anything at all oh i mean no. yeah he <laughs> might answer if you got some off the wall non-woodworking thing he might answer he might not i don't know i can't guarantee one way or the other with that <laughs> 
So, well, hey, thanks for everybody for stopping by. We're all we're gonna do is cut off, cut off the recording portion of it. We're not gonna worry as much about some of the stuff when we're doing this. We will watch chat room and we will be here uh, for a while yet. So, thanks everybody for stopping by. And if you missed anything because of the goofy ads, we recorded everything up to this point. So, yeah. thanks for stopping by. Thank you.